afternoon, ladies. And Patty, thank you very much indeed for that kind introduction. I can't believe it's a year since the last uh, event. And I know that you're going to have a fantastic programme. And congratulations to Fortune for putting such an interesting programme on. It is a pleasure to be here again this year amongst so many successful and inspiring women from around the world who are making their voices heard in so many different areas. I think and I suspect, well I hope that pretty well all of you think, that it is critical that women are a part of the conversation about how we build a better future, not just for ourselves but for society as a whole. People are best served by organisations that look and sound like them, that understand them, that understand their hopes, their aspirations, and their fears. We have to make sure that women are represented at every level and in every sphere. And we, all of us here in this room and our colleagues beyond, have to act as role models for women who will come after us, reassuring them that nothing need hold them back. This government, my government, is working hard to help women achieve their potential and we are proud of our record with more women in work than ever before, more women on company boards, more women-led businesses and the narrowest gender pay gap on record. But we have to go further and we think that that process begins with an excellent education that opens as many doors to young women as possible and that's the beauty of my two roles that fit so well together, education and champion the rights of women uh, and equalities. We are working to break down gender stereotypes so that women know the opportunities that are available to them, including in science, technology, engineering and maths careers. The STEM workforce is vital to the British economy and our research base is bolstered when we draw scientists and engineers from as wide a talent pool as possible. Women need to know that there are a range of options open to them, from university courses to apprenticeship places, which are not the preserve of young men. Let's not forget that girls are outperforming boys at school and yet they don't always choose the career paths that lead to the highest paying jobs. So that's why it's so important that we encourage girls to consider careers in these fields and why I'm using both my hats as Secretary of State for Education and Minister for Women and Equalities to fund programmes in schools and colleges to increase the take up of STEM subjects. I have no doubt that the new stream of young women we have studying STEM and moving into STEM careers will invent and create things that will not just contribute to building a better future, but will actually change our world. And they will be handsomely rewarded for it too, because evidence shows that studying STEM leads to substantial wage premiums. Indeed, the lower participation of women in STEM careers is a key contributing factor to the continuing gender pay gap which the Prime Minister has committed us to closing within a generation. So in the UK, we are making it mandatory for our UK companies with 250 employees or more to publish their gender pay and bonus gaps, along with the proportions of men and women at different levels in their organisations. We think that this unprecedented transparency will drive the change that will mean sexism can no longer hide in our workplaces. Women will be able to identify the employers that are genuinely championing their talented female employees and make informed career choices on that basis. Now, in October last year, we celebrated exceeding the Lord Davies target for 25% of women on FTSE 100 boards. But we know there is more work still to do, particularly on getting more women into our executive pipeline. So that's why the government has appointed the chair of GlaxoSmithKline, Sir Philip Hampton, and the chair of UBM, Dame Helen Alexander, to leave an in, lead an independent review on how we can increase the representation of women at executive level in FTSE 350 companies. And let me be really clear that increasing the participation of women in business is not just the right thing to do, it clearly is, but it also has huge and positive implications for our economy. It's been estimated that if the market participation of women and men were equalised, then annual GDP could be increased by at least 10% by 2025, quite literally building a better and more prosperous future for all of us. So it's no wonder that businesses are no longer asking why the participation of women is so important. They're now asking how they make it a reality. And in my own arena of politics, the old gender stereotypes are beginning 
to break down too. Parliament is slowly beginning to look more like the Britain that we aspire to represent. Women now make up nearly 30% of members of parliament, a third of ministers attending cabinet, and a third of those appointed to high profile ministerial roles. Women are making our voices heard at Westminster in bigger numbers than ever before, and we're using them to bring about real change. I was honored last week to be part of the celebrations marking 150 years since the first petition was presented to parliament calling for women to have the right to vote. Signed by more than 1,500 prominent women of their time, the petition was presented to Parliament by John Stuart Mill, MP. And I think it's important for any group fighting for equality to have allies to make the case alongside them, to fight with what, them for what they believe is right. But ladies, it still took another 62 years for women to get that vote, right to vote. And it's still the case that we have more men elected in this 2015 Parliament than the total number of women that have ever been elected to the UK Parliament. So I think it's fair to say we have a little more progress to make. But in this generation of parliamentarians, we do have plenty of thoroughly modern men who champion the role and rights of women both here and abroad. And I can't miss this opportunity, not to mention Hillary Clinton's achievements of last week. Because no matter what happens in November, what Hillary has achieved in being the first woman to be nominated for president by a major US political party is huge and historic. As Hillary said last week, her victory means, and I quote her, barriers can come down, justice and equality can win, and there are no ceilings, no limits on any of us. If Hillary does win the presidential election, then for the very first time, the voice of the free world will belong to a woman, a woman who has dedicated her life to public service and to building a better future. Now, I know that those of you who live here in the UK will have seen huge amounts of coverage of the EU referendum in the last few weeks. And if you're visiting London, then I'm sorry, but you're going to see lots of coverage of the EU referendum while you're here. But I'm not sorry, really, because this is a momentous vote. This is a vote on Britain's place in the world for the next few decades. It is a once-in-a-generation, potentially once-in-a-lifetime vote for all of us. And I'm sure that those who are eligible have registered to vote. I've made my view very clear. I believe that we are stronger, safer and better off within a reformed European Union. In many ways, this vote is more important than a general election. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to have your say on the future of our country for generations to come. Women make up more than 50% of the population, so we can really make our voices heard in this vote. But whatever your view, if you're eligible, please go out and vote on the 23rd of June. As I said, women have died so that we have the right to vote, so let's honour their memory and use our vo voices and our votes. Patty, thank you for inviting me to speak here again today. I think this is a really exciting time for women. We are making our voices heard, and we are doing so everywhere and at every level. We are playing our part in building the better future our society really needs. Long may that continue. Long may all of you continue to make your mark on the world, and remember to support the next generation coming behind us. Thank you. Have a great time.